You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. I'm very happy to have on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, Dr. Stanley Ridgely, who's a professor in the Department of Management at Drexel University. Stan, a pleasure to have you. Hi, it's great to be here, uh, Douglas. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure and honor. So uh, you teach a number of courses from global business and international business to public speaking. And what I really want to focus on today is your, your topic of strategic thinking. So as we did delve into that, tell me, how do you define strategic thinking? Well, Douglas, uh, you know, that's a, that's a tough one. It's, uh, I could hedge here, and I could give you something simple like this. Uh, strategic thinking means thinking and acting with the future in mind. And you know, that would be that simple, and that would be correct. But it's also much too abstract to be of, of any use. I think that strategic thinking involves much, much more. I call it a psychological construct. It's a way of thinking about the future and aligning our intentions, our capabilities, and our resources to achieve our long-term goals. And in this process, we make use, systemic use of analytical tools and we, to achieve these goals. And we want to position ourselves most advantageously in the present while aligning those capabilities, intentions, and resources to achieve a series of objectives that I think you know, lead to an ultimate goal. Okay, so... In, 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 in short, let me just say, Douglas, it means navigating your way through life with purpose and plan. Purpose and plan. Okay, I like those two words. Those are two words I use in my day job. In, in real life, I'm a financial <laughs> advisor. I only do the, uh, the radio show once a week. It gives me an opportunity to speak to, uh, to very, very interesting people like you. So uh -huh. we're talking about intention, capabilities, and resources, which I, I think are topics that as a financial advisor I touch on with people. How would you use these strategic thinking concepts if you were advising someone, let's say, in his personal finances? Huh. Well, first of all, uh, strategic thinking doesn't really come naturally. And um, what we have to do is develop a uh, – so let me back up and just tell you that um, if I had to advise someone to engage in strategic thinking just off the cuff uh, in some sort of um, uh, loosey-goosey sort of way rather than adopting some sort of uh, long-term program, I would say there are about four words that um, to, to guide us. And those words would be vision focus, I would say action, and analysis. And uh, I think that most of the most successful strategic thinkers of our time, and I'm referring to people like uh, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, even Madonna and Arnold Schwarzenegger, all of them have adopted a, that, that uh, schema of vision, uh, focus, action, and analysis. Uh, they have unrelenting focus. And um, that, I think, is the actual, the, uh, the, the key or the heart of, of strategic thinking. Okay, so it actually, it, and again, this sounds very much like uh, what you might tell someone who's trying to grow his wealth or simply be successful over the long term. The first thing is, think what your goals are. What is the vision that you're trying to get to? And then focus on those. Uh, let's, let's break these up a little bit. When, the problem, and again, maybe I'm just trying to get some, uh, some good advice from you about how I could do my job better, but when I want to help people develop a vision for the future, you know, I'm talking to a 30 or 40-year-old about retiring in 20, 25, 30 years, they don't necessarily have the ability to comprehend the, the vastness of the future. How do you help someone do that? Well, you know, the future is, is, I think that's the most important uh, question that most any CEO has at the WTF. What's the future? And the future is unknowable. And it's uh, that vast sea you referred to, is a, it's a very nice, very apt metaphor, the idea of certainty out there. And it can, it can really strike a lot of fear in people's hearts, especially in these turbulent times that globalization has thrust on us here in the 21st century. Uh, but there's really no need for fear. I think the strategic thinking offers us a guide, an anchor, if you will, a safe harbor, a port, um, uh, with regard to our personal finances and, and also with regard to, to, to companies. We can reduce uncertainty. Can we eliminate it? 
No, certainly not. No one can. But we can certainly re- reduce that uncertainty with new ways of thinking, logically, reasonably. A scenario analysis is one of those uncertainty-reducing exercises that we can do. Um, and we know that not so that, uh, that the future is unknowable, but that doesn't mean that anything can happen. Some things can happen with, or will happen with more probability than others. And I think that scenario analysis, and it's worth delving more deeply into scenario analysis, which was developed back in the 1960s by Royal Dutch Shell uh, Company, the idea of crafting alternative paths to the future. Now, number one, this is an example of trying to understand what will happen in the future without our active participation. Now, number two, it means can we envision a future within those scenarios that will be uh, sanguine for ourselves? And if we can, craft that vision. How do we get from point A to point Z along that way? It means looking to the future and letting what we want to be five years from now inform our actions today. Now, that may sound like I'm evading the question of specific advice for a personal <laughs> financial analyst, but this is, this is the, 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 the paradox. I cannot tell you specifically what to do in a specific situation. I can suggest once I know all of the facts, but only you know your specific financial situation. And so we look to strategic thinking, the logical, the reasonable, the forward-looking um, uh, techniques of, of tools of analysis, such as the SWOT, such as value chain analysis, to find out how the pieces fit t- together for ourselves personally. Michael Porter has suggested, and I, I believe him, that uh, strategic thinking and strategy means doing things differently than everyone else. Now, we ask ourselves, did Steve Jobs have a manual of success that he used when he crafted or built his company Apple and came back to Apple and saved it in 1998? Did he have a manual to tell him that the iPod is what people want with regard to music or the iPad, with regard to computing? No, he did not. And yet we looked to Steve Jobs for some sort of guidance, some sort of manual for success. And I find this is I find that this is uh, typical in the world of strategy, where people use substitutes for strategy off the shelf, things like TQM or, um, or business process management or Six Sigma, and try to substitute these techniques for strategy. Strategy means doing things differently, and you have to come up with that plan to get from here to there. You have to actually create the map. I can't give it to you. Okay. Okay, we are talking with Professor Stan, Stan Ridgely, who teaches at Drexel University in the Department of Management. Uh, he teaches a number of different courses. Today we're talking specifically about strategy. Now, Professor Ridgely is a former military, military intelligence officer for the U.S. Army. He served five years in West Berlin and near the, near the Czech German border. He traveled around the world. It's actually funny, you mentioned a minute ago about Royal Dutch Shell. We had the former chief scientist a fellow named Dr. Harold Vinegar on the Goldstein on Gelt show a little while back. He had been the the, uh, chief scientist for Royal Dutch Shell. Now he lives in Israel and has spoken on the Goldstein on Gelt show about how much oil we have underground here. So if anyone missed that interview, check it out at YouTube. Just look up Goldstein on Gelt. Stan, I want to focus on something you said, which is strategic thinking is, it means you have to do things differently from how others did it. Is that really the case? Because a lot of times I seem to think that success that people have is is due to the fact that they look at other successful people and then actually copy them. Well, that's another issue altogether is success. And there certainly is a business niche or a business uh, for us that says, hey, you know, and mimicry is, is, uh, can be successful. Uh, that's something totally different. I'm not looking at success. And, and if, if people, there are many different routes to success. And if mimicry or copying um, a, uh, a competitor uh, allow, and doing it more cheaply, that is certainly a, a strategic part of strategic thinking. In other words, doing what other people are doing, only offering a cheaper alternative because your processes or the way you do things differently um, is your strategy. I'll give an example of IKEA, the furniture store, which is a worldwide operation. Uh, they do things differently, and it's very difficult to copy what IKEA is doing. Now, they're really offering, they're really offering nothing uh, that someone else couldn't offer if they had thought of it first or were to try to copy it. They offer a collection or a package of, um, I would say, uh, activities that are very difficult in toto to imitate. Um, the the, the uh, do-it-yourself mantra, the, uh, they're really outsourcing the assembly of their furniture to, <laughs> to young, the customers. Uh, to, <laughs> 
We have to the customers. Uh, they offer a, a unique store experience. They offer unique hours. They offer unique. Uh, they offer uh, child care on site because they're catering to a particular target market. Uh, any one of these uh, activities would be easy for for another firm to copy, but in Toto, it'd be very difficult to to do so unless a company wanted to completely reinvent itself. In which case. Um, uh, IKEA would have an insur almost insurmountable lead um, on that particular uh, way of doing business. Um, but you asked me about finance, um, and I understand that your audience... Let's talk about uh, personal finance. Right? That's really the, what I'd like to touch on is how the strategic thinking that you really teach people to do can be applied on a personal level, not you know, in case there's a, someone who's listening who's not a CEO of a major international firm. Well, I tell you, finance people are, are great, and I deal with a lot of finance professors, and uh, it's absolutely essential in the world of finance, both at a, an organizational level and certainly at a, at a personal level. And I, I think that finance presents interesting opportunities in the application of, of strategic thinking. Uh, in fact, strategic planning and business emerged from what we used to call the annual budgeting process. Uh, and we all, you know, all of us personally have our own annual budgeting process. And finance has become a kind of a church of, of business, and perhaps it's because we have we, the illusion of certitude that numbers provide us. It's a kind of a comforting type of thing, and these, these uncertain times of culture and, and economics and politics, we can always revert to the numbers because they give a kind of a, an anchor for us, and this is kind of a, a, false, a false anchor. It's an illusion in the sense that numbers are really proxies for other things. Num numbers are the proxies for the conditions that gave rise to the numbers themselves. And I'm referring to, of course, what we find on a, on a spreadsheet. Finance folks, both personally and, in, and, and professionally, or I should say in, in the organization, uh, they do, who become steeped in strategic thinking, who become strategic personalities, and who can weave broad-based strategic analysis into those considerations can steal a march on their peers and can help their firms gain competitive advantage. I gave a talk last year to the CFO Alliance, and I, in that talk I addressed this very issue. Uh, all of us, including finance people and our personal finances, can get, we can get um, a, caught in what I call tool rut. We attack the, the problems of our personal finances the same way every time, mm -hmm. uh, oblivious to the notion that there are other ways of thinking, other ways of attacking problems, other modes of analysis. It writ large, we have macro analysis such as ratio analysis in the industry, in finance industry, but we also have uh, other tools that can help with strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We can look at the political economic situation outside ourselves. Uh, it, it means, in fact, I can give you an example of uh, utilizing chess All right. uh, as a teaching tool. I, um, I use chess. I'm, I used to be a fairly good chess player many years ago, but now I use it as a teaching tool. It is an incredibly a robust metaphor for, for business um, in and, and just this way. Um, it's, uh, it trains us to evaluate the position after every action and every response. It trains us to analyze our resources, craft a plan to deploy those resources. But it also, and this is, I think, the most important aspect of chess uh, as related to our personal lives, it, is, it trains us to evaluate our position after every move and counter move. We don't just blindly follow our strategy or our original plan, irrespective of, of the position on the board, irrespective of what our opponent does. We have to take into consideration what our, what our competitors are doing. And this, I think, is, is, it trains us in this respect to constantly evaluate and reevaluate. Mm -hmm. That is something we can use in our personal lives, a constant pulse-taking, temperature-taking, if you will, <laughs> of our own personal financial situation to say, hey, is our plan really working? Uh, right. This may seem simple, Douglas, but it's really not done all oh, that often. And it's certainly not simple. I have to tell you, it's something I discuss every day with clients, talking to them about how they need to stop, look at what's going on, and make a decision. And even not doing something is a decision in and of itself. Stan, we're just about out of time. I'm very sorry. We've been talking to Dr. Stanley Ridgely from Drexel University, the Department of Management there. Uh, he's written a number of books. Stan, in the last few seconds, just tell me, how can people follow your work and learn more? Oh well, uh, the, the uh, my my course twenty four uh, DVD lectures on uh, it's on DVD. It's a strategic thinking skills, and it's published by the the great courses dot com. And the great courses dot com is a, is a company that's been around for twenty years and offers a, a myriad of courses. I'm I'm partial to my own course in this series, and <laughs> and I would say that my 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 uh, my book the the complete guide to business school presenting 
uh, just published um, last month. And that also incorporates a lot of the strategic thinking that I've been talking about. But if you really want to get into how strategic thinking can help you uh, on, a, on, a, uh, on a deeper level, it's not, a, it's not an easy topic, but it is uh, pretty much straightforward, logical, reasonable, and I'm excited about it. And, and, and I, I would suggest that, that folks, uh, <laughs> that folks uh, purchase my course or just at least uh, consult with it. Uh, strategic thinking skills um, at thegreatcourses.com. Great. Stan Ridgely from Drexel University, thanks again so much for your time. Uh, it's, it's been a real pleasure, Buzz. You take care. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.